Hey everybody, got our last eco update for 2019. Um, some of you are new here and uh, maybe you wouldn't know that Superfeast is always behind the scenes uh, working on you know, we basically just want to become a more um, sustainable business, but in the sense that we want to become, you know, where, you know, if we're doing Taoist tonic herbs, the whole nature of our business and our personal growth and development, as well as what we're offering is coming into further communion with the elements and nature. And we wish our business to reflect that. For those of you that have been following along for a while, you know, we are always working behind the scenes um, to ensure that, you know, we're just experimenting with ways that we can just get into the flow of the natural order a little bit more, as well as our primary intention, which is to get everyone hella healthy. So let's just kick right off. Replacing our craft bags. So for our bulk sizes, we have craft bags and we're, we've just for, for a while now, we've been looking at compostable solutions. Now we can, it remains, it was like the first thing that I reported on with our eco updates and um, everyone was very excited to hear about you know, where the technology was at, um, you know, to, to learn about, you know, the different brands that were doing this kind of work. Um, un unfortunately, it remains that every test that we have, you know, maybe after like six months, and I'll show you one that, you know, that we were very excited about was going to be the solution. Go. Very hard. So it's just not insulated. The herbs don't, herbs don't remain protected because we're, we don't use crappy starch fillers and because we don't grow on grain and therefore then there's grain in our mushrooms. We grow on wood and we use the fruiting body. Therefore, it's all pure extract. No shit added whatsoever. It's a little bit more susceptible to humidity and the atmosphere and going hard. Oh, you hear that? Snap. Um, so... All of them are still going hard. We were very excited. Um, Farley, who's um, eco manager here, very excited about this one um, pouch here. And it was uh, like, you know, two weeks ago, if that, and, and um, worst yet. But at the same time, that's not the worst in terms of the, the, the company. It's just the fact that this technology isn't designed to do what we need. It's a complete insulation. However, if you don't have such a volatile product, and you're using, you know, something craft bag esque um, to pack him. You can get in touch with Farley, F A R L E Y, at superfeast.com.au to get a list of all these really awesome companies and the people who are like who are really generous with their with their time, um, you know, like behind, you know, in, in helping us get solutions. So you can get those solutions too. But for us, not happening right now. However, um, you know, we're, we're always experimenting with other solutions. So we've, we've experimented with the, the Milo tin kind of style, but you know, we can see um, too much air gets trapped and definitely not insulated enough. So you can see that's been uh, a month and that's gone very hard in there. So um, inexcusable. Uh, and we've, but we've got a couple of other trials uh, going on at the moment, which we're really, really excited about. So, um, yeah, that's just wanted to invite you in along for that little bit of journey. We need us finding something that's got a two year shelf life for our kind of volatile, but very powerful tonic herbs. The other one in the realm samples. Um, I've given you the update before. We don't do samples. We don't one thing we really are flying in the face of is this single use of plastic and this binging. I have conversations with um, Farley about it quite a bit. Just the, the binging and obsessive nature we have in the West with just like that one, like that can the consumerism of just like one plastic piece and then bang, getting that straight into the waste. Now it's like, whatever, like it, it happens and it's not like, we don't, we don't have to get moral and wrong or right about it, but you know, it's definitely something that we can, you know, when we crack that and we crack the consciousness of that, for, I'm talking about myself and ourselves at the moment, I'm not like, not, not even looking outward, you know, we're going to see such a, uh, a, a dramatic transformation of, you know, like of, of, well, you know, just the way, the way we live and breathe and of course industry. And so in and around that samples, you know, it does make sense for us to have samples and you know, who, you know, if we're like, you know, talking to a new store and they're like, well, I want to sample, you know, a little sample of your product or give samples of products to, to customers so that they can try that naturally. Then we're going to move a shitload more products like it's significant, um, but we don't want to contribute to that. Um, we work really hard as a ground, you know, at least a baseline intention not to have single use 
plastic. That's why, you know, with the craft bags, you know, there are a lot of serves in 250 um, up to a kilo um, craft bags. And so, you know, that, that that's lasting a, a long time and then that can be um, that can be reused to an extent, but something like, you know, or even like a single use sachet that you tear, boom, it's always going to be plastic involved. And then you just bin that, not willing to contribute to that. So that's why we don't have samples. Tried a compostable sample here. You can, you can see <laughs> no flex. However, we're trialing another one right now. It hasn't been long. Um, it's, it's, you know, so we can, we can maybe give, we'll keep you updated to how we go with this new material here. We've got a really great man, a local, local man who's working with Farley directly and giving a lot of time to, to files to help us find solutions. And that's the thing about this industry. It's really nice. We, it's really nice meeting all these companies doing these things. You know, they're really, they're just, they're working hard when there's no, you know, you know, there's just no help. There's no funding. You know, think about how much waste, you know, we're trying really hard here and everyone behind the scenes of the warehouse has been absolutely transformed. And as you can see, I'm going to give you a couple of extra insights on what's happening with our, you know, even in our um, soft plastic. But, you know, you compare that to, you know, the medical industry and the fact, you know, you know, like that all their surgical tools or the tools that they're just working in their everyday life are coming in single use plastic and, you know, then they tear it and then they have to bin that plastic and they can only use that tool once before they're binning that and that goes out. Like there's like there's millions and millions and millions of pieces of single use plastic going um, on there. And if we just keep on charging and leading the way and hopefully you know, being really gentle on ourselves and everyone else and not getting judgmental about it. And, you know, and we just, you know, this will, this is, you know, there's been companies doing that who have shined a light for us to show us that it's possible for us to do it. And then more people who are, you know, just at least doing a little bit better and moving their life and, you know, into, in a, in a direction that's a little bit more sustainable and hopefully a little bit less plasticky, um, you know, without it being something coming from a, you know, from a, from a guilt or morality. Then I think, I think the industry is really going to shift. I think we're already seeing that. Pallets, speaking of, um, it's one of the things that happens in when you're moving qu larger quantities of a product is you send pallets and it's um, cling wrap is, you know, it's one of the, you know, it's like the ultimate plastic that looks like a jellyfish when it gets into the water, <laughs> gets, you know, gets like eaten by turtles and such. So it's one of those ones. It's like, oh man, it's, it's, it's hard to see when a pallet gets delivered and it's wrapped in that much plastic where really hitting up um like we um, we've it's only like one person who delivers to us and in that plastic sum we're really working to like lead the way to show that there's another option so what we've I've, I've told you guys before i just wanted to give you an update it's going really well um reusable straps um for our pallets so there's no plastic used uh whatsoever it's possible if you are a business that sends in pallets or if you have a company delivering to you in pallets you know maybe you can you know, you can get, again, get in touch with Farley. She can give you some information about what we're doing in the setup. Um, sticky tape, we had a bit of a back and forth of Farley did and, and was in the warehouse did as well, but not really getting answers about, you know, this, um, you know, the paper tape, what the paper tape was actually made out of. And so we were all like, you know, is it a bit of a farce? But ob obviously the paper tape is much better than just a standard plastic tape. Um, we are, um, basically looking we're talking to the supplier to not provide the paper tape in plastic it was one of the things that you know was a you know it's, it's of course it's much better but you know at the same time um you know it's, it's, it's just a bit of hypocrisy you know to, to 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 have that so um we're hopefully they're going to come get over the line and give it to us you know not wrapped in plastic otherwise we'll go look for another supplier because they're popping up all over the place now um, remember, just a reminder, your address stickers that are on your boxes and on your bags, they are compostable. So that can just go in the, you can either take that off and compost it or the whole, you know, obviously the, the whole um, cardboard box can be composted. Um, we are working on a jar return program. We have been for a long time. I know it seems like, a, just let us return the jars. And it's just really not that easy with, um, some particular standards and regulations, but we have got the, you know, we've got it moving with solutions there. So we're really excited to keep you up to date on that one. It's been one we've wanted to support people because, you know, using these Miron jars, you guys know that a mushroom fairy dies if you, if you throw out um, or even recycle these Miron jars. Um, so a lot of you have reused them, you know, hashtag um, my magic Miron. Yeah, hashtag, it used to be my Miron when I was in front of the gram, but I'm not snappy enough at creating hashtags. So it got, it got upgraded to magic Miron. Um, and so you, you know, go and check out that story highlight on Instagram or it's on the website as well. And, um, you know, um, you can go to the drop downs and find our sustainability section. 
you get lots of ideas of how to use your Miron. However, some people just need want to return them. And so we're going to be offering that soon. As soon as we can. Remember, we're a small company trying to do really big things, guys. We've got a you know, limited amount of resources. So next we get to our waste streams. So since moving to Mullumbimby, um, we've been chatting a lot with uh, Tony from, um, from Richmond Waste Management. So let's go through the waste streams. Um, clear soft plastic, obviously the biggest one. When we do get those pallets that come wrapped in plastic, we know we, we go that we want to separate that clean oh, soft plastic, you know, so we want to make sure that we're segmenting out, you know, even our plastic waste soft from hard. And so that soft plastic, basically what happens now, we're able to have that picked up by Richmond to be reused, which is really, ex it's really exciting. I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Farley's been talking, um, to Tony, but and, and if anyone's more of a, you know, you know, I think Farley's been a bit of a dog of the bone with it, but if anyone's even more of a dog of the bone, you know, when it comes to these things, you know, feel free to get in touch with Richmond Waste. I'm sure they'll be able to give you some insight. Basically, they send it to Visi, V-I-S-Y, or Aurora. Um, and then from there, it gets, the pl soft plastics get bailed up and sent to Mexico or the US, some of it used in Australia. Um, they shred it, turn it into TV monitors, keyboards, street furniture, and f um, floorboards. Um, floorboards or floorboards. Definitely, um, that, that's not going to landfill. It's been recycled. Now, I think you guys know that China stopped accepting waste because majority of the plastic that was being sent there was at a 25% contamination rate, so they stopped. But basically, they will take it if it's at like a 0.5% contamination um, you know, rate. And so that now, if it gets upcycled like that, all of a sudden, China and India become an option to send this plastic to and recycling to once again. So that's what's happening there, which we're really excited about. Um, other color, um, colorful soft plastics are taken to Red Cycle. So every week, um, you know, there's a roster within our kitchen, whoever's, you know, just in charge with like filling our spring water, you know, cleaning up little bits and bobs and, um, and also taking uh, colorful soft plastics, right? That don't fit into that clear soft plastics category over to Red Cycle. Red Cycle have bins in Coles and Woolies. Um, and then of course there's, you know, there's curbside recycling with the cardboard, um, and, and, and then other things like batteries, um, and CDs can go into pouches you can get from Australia Post, or you can take to office works or something like that. And then of course there's landfill. The other thing we've got is composting. Um, at the moment, our sub pods, um, S U B P O D S sub pods. Um, yeah, Andrew at compost central was helping us out with those and he's going to have their, Finally going to have them ready hopefully by December and we're going to be able to compost there at our warehouse in Mullumbimby. For now, um, the Branches, which is our, our friends, the cafe there across the road, they're helping us with our compostable goods. So that's awesome. Um, once again, our new HQ is running on solar splendidly. Um, and next year, we're going to have a good investigation um, into, into offsetting the carbon footprint and um, you know just kind of understanding what, that, what that's about. I've got a friend that used to um, Sebastian at Clearlight Saunas is a good friend of mine. He used to do um, auditing for really huge companies in and around um, carbon footprint. He's a really, he's a really grounded, practical guy. Um, really seems to understand the nuances of the science. What's really obvious, you know, how to, you know, how, how to, you know, in seemingly opposing aspects of the science, how to find what's really real there um, in terms of our impact. And of course, you know, just also giving it, you know, just a little bits of advice and how, as a company, we're just, op you know. Just, just offset, you know, what we're doing through, you know, through, through operating. So we're going to be working on that and be great. We've got a little goal to, um, to, to get, um, carbon negative. Um, as you, many of you know, I mean, just in terms of being a sustainable business, you know, like, you know, we, you know, we like to contribute as well where we can. Um, we like to contribute, especially like in the, in just recently to, um, rainforest rescue who, uh, you know, they're basically, whether it's the Daintree or other endangered, um, rainforest, uh, regions around Australia, um, and the world, uh, we've been liking contributing to them. And so, you know, we've like, we, we've got a few causes going at the moment. Um, I really like contributing to ACF Australian Conservation Foundation as well. They've got really beautiful, um, projects that they're working on, um, as well as, you know, recently with all the fires. Been contributing to um, to wires, um, the koala hospitals, and um, and the um, real fire service as well. So just know that there's always that that's that's always occurring behind the scenes as well. Remember, uh, in terms of when you are putting in an order, you 
you can tick the box if you want to receive the herbal handbook. That means we're not having to send out herbal handbooks, um, you know, and just use resources, you know, for, you know, that's, you know, it's paper, it's printing, it's resources. We don't want to be, oh, here, here we are. Here's a, here's a, here's a perfect example. So, um, just, you know, make sure you're mindful of that. And we do that as well. You know, when we're sending out to stores, you know, it's not just, you know, blasting them with huge amounts of like of, of this, of this material. We, uh, we like to ask the question. So, um, Guys, um, as I said, you can get in touch with Farley, you can get in touch with us. I know not many people really ask us about this sustainability um, aspect of, of the company, but a few of you do, and we're really loving learning from you. A lot of people are learning from us. We're kind of inspiring each other, um, which, is, uh, which has been really nice. Again, one of the core things I'd like to reiterate again and again and again is, you know, in terms of tonic herbalism and the philosophy that it comes from. The key here thing here that we're going for is slowly, sustainably working towards health sovereignty, taking our, um, you know, back control, um, understanding of our health and what it takes to have a nice, long, healthy life that doesn't lend itself towards degeneration um, and doesn't sacrifice our energy for, you know, for something, you know, for some external institution so that we will degenerate, you know, like sooner, later in life. We want to keep guard of our jing energy, keep guard of that, that living energy that keeps your physical body sustained and with a foundation so you can rock on for your life without, you know, without these these, these major debil debilitating issues. Um, you know, that's the whole point of tonic herbalism. And if we do that and we have more and more people really taking control and leaning less on this modern medical institution, which is just an, a gobbler of resources, right? You know, it's an absolute, and we want to stop, we want, we, we, we want to be grateful for it, but the less and less people we have relying on that system, relying, you know, economically, if we have people, you know, maintaining control of their health and not leaning on an institution which likes to gobble up, um, you know, infinite resources in order to, um, in order to support other people, the better economically, um, you know, medically and just personally and spiritually we're going to be. So that's a huge, um, contribution we're going for in terms of, you know, being a sustainable business. Um, so that's what we're up to here at Superfees. Please, um, hit us up if you've got any questions about our eco journey. Um, you know, we've got that landing page on the website as well. And so you can go to the drop down and find all the information. Um, yeah, just like hit us up and hope you've enjoyed and, uh, Hope, you know, here's cheers to a great sustainable 2019, guys.